Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Aspiring Author Q&A series. Today we are talking about the three types of book publishing and how to choose one of them because it can be really, really confusing when you're starting out and you're trying to choose between the different publishing options, so we're going to demystify that today. Um, Mary's away at a meditation retreat, so you do have me. Um, if you haven't heard of who I am, I will be doing a quick introduction in a second. And I am going to be doing a little bit of a Facebook page takeover while Mary's away as well. So you may have seen me around here, but if you haven't and you wonder who the lady with the accent is, I'm Cheryl Muir and I'm a media and a publishing strategist based in the UK, as the accent will tell you. I actually worked in corporate PR before working with authors in my business at the moment. And when I was in PR, I worked with multinationals and won media coverage for them. So between my time in PR and my time running my business and helping authors get publicity. I've had people featured in the BBC, the Wall Street Journal, the Globe and Mail, um, Elephant Journal, Mind Body Green, Huffington Post, Inc.com, lots and lots of different places. So that's a little bit about me. Oh, I'm also co-hosting the Aspiring Author Workshop with Mary Shaws, who you know. Um, and we're co-hosting that on Sunday, January 14th. So do feel very welcome to join us for that. And the details will be down below. So I can see there's a couple of you on live. Let me know where in the world you're from. I'd love to hear where you're, you're dialing in from. I know it's quite late here in the UK. It's about well, it's six o'clock at night. I'm usually on a lot earlier, so I don't usually catch catch many of you live so let me know whereabouts in the world you are. Um, I'm not sure how familiar all of you are with England but I'm in an area of England called the Lake District which is up north uh, close to the border of Scotland actually so lots of lakes and mountains and um, today we had some snow as well so things pretty much ground to the halt and everybody put the kettle on and had a cup of tea and very much stayed inside as is the British way. So Let's get started with those three types of publishing. This is really a foundational piece, and as I mentioned at the start of the video, it is something that can be quite confusing when you're starting out. So I'm gonna cover the three types of publishing, some pros and cons, and how to establish which one's gonna be right for you. It does sound very counterintuitive though, doesn't it, to, to start talking about publishing before you've even written a word of your book, but it really is one of the most important things, and I'll tell you why in just a second. And also, we're talking about non-fiction books here, so depending on where you know me from, you may or may not know, I also write books as well, and I write fiction books, although I am a multi-genre author, so I write different kind of fiction, including uh, dark romance, crime thriller, psychological thriller a little bit. There's always a psychological and a spiritual theme throughout all of my fiction novels anyway. Um, and I also write non-fiction, so I am a multi-genre author, but we're focusing purely on non-fiction here. And the reason I say that is because it does work differently in fiction, particularly when it comes to traditional publishing. So just to be super clear, it's non-fiction, so self-help, spirituality, all that kind of thing. But if you are writing fiction, then pop that down in the comments and let me know, because I'd love to hear uh, what genre you're writing, and maybe that's something we can cover in an upcoming video, because frankly, any excuse for me to talk fiction is, is good in my books. So, uh, the three main types of publishing, which you've more than likely heard of, are one, traditional publishing, two, self-publishing, and three, hybrid publishing. Now, they are known by different terms as well. There's different sort of slang terms and terminology for each of those types. So I'll explain in a little bit more detail what each of those are called and, and what they entail. So the first one was traditional publishing. You may have heard of people getting a book deal, I'm sure you have, and this is when authors are paid in advance and then they get access to a whole team. They hand in their manuscript and then they have an editorial team, a layout team, a design team, and they have access to marketing and publicity. Although, as Mary has been telling you, that's only about 20% um, of the case for authors. So you are expected to sell about 80% of the copies of your book as a first time author. So even when you are with a traditional publisher, you are still very much um, taking care of a lot of the promotion, but you do have access to that team who work for the publisher. 
in this case, when you get a book deal, book deal, deal excuse me, get my words out, I'm speaking, thinking of the dales and the hills in the Lake District, that's what it is. Uh, but when you get a book deal, they pay you. So the publisher is paying you. Some examples of publishers, I'm sure you've heard of the big five in the US. So some of those are HarperCollins, Penguin Random House, um, Macmillan Publishing, there's loads of them. Um, and in terms of personal development, you're looking at Hay House, so they have publishing arms in the UK, the US and Australia as well. And Penguin Living um, is an imprint of Penguin Random House, and they're very much focused on, as the name suggests, living its lifestyle and that non-fiction area. So they're worth checking out if you, if you want to. Now, the important point here is if you want a traditional book deal and you're writing non-fiction, so self-help, you don't write the manuscripts until later, and I'm sure Mary's mentioned this, but it is really, really important. You write and submit a book proposal first, and if and when that book proposal is uh, accepted, then what will happen is you'll uh, go through that process of then writing your manuscript, and you'll be given maybe six months or so to complete that manuscript, and then you'll enter production with that particular publisher, which can be two months-ish, uh, and going through that stage of editing and layout and book cover design and so on and so forth. But this is really important because you, you need to know how you're publishing your book in order to do this. Because if you think, well, I'm just gonna go write my book and then you decide you want a book deal, you may go to the publisher and um, have your book proposal accepted and then your manuscript is sort of thrown out and you have to start from scratch, which is very, very disheartening. So it is important you know how you're gonna publish before you even start. So the second type is self-publishing. This is the purest um, DIY, do-it-yourself method out there. You do it all. You do all of the editing, uh, layout, book cover design. You can obviously hire people to, to do those elements for you, but you are project managing the entire thing, which for a first-time author can be very, very intimidating and a little bit full-on. Um, it's very, very intense for a first book. And in this situation, you pay them. So you're paying them to have your book published. And it is very affordable if you're using uh, a self-publishing option. Self-publishing options you've probably heard of are things like Create Space, which is Amazon's self-publishing house. And third and final, we have hybrid publishing. This is a personal favorite of mine for aspiring authors who don't want to go the route of a book deal because it does give you a lot of support. It's also known as things like vanity press or assisted self-publishing. I'm going to refer to it here though as hybrid publishing because it is really a hybrid between self-pub and getting a traditional book deal because you buy a package like you do with self-publishing but then you get access to a team of editorial layout and design. So it really is a mixture of, of traditional and self-pub. It is the most expensive option of the three but if you are new to the process and you plan to write a number of books, I do really recommend this because you learn so much about the process and then you'll be better informed to either do a self-publishing, a pure DIY self-publishing option next time or go the route of a book deal. But either way, you understand how this works and you understand the production process because production is a completely different uh, different ball game and maybe I'll, I'll cover that in um, an upcoming video. So as I mentioned, again, you pay them with this. So it is an investment. Some examples of hybrid publishers are Balboa Press, which is by Hay House. So just like Amazon have their own self-publishing arm, um, um, Hay House do have Balboa Press, which is self-publishing, and Book Baby and Ingram Spark. So there's loads and loads that you can choose from. They're just three. Um, so those are our three types of publishing options, traditional publishing, which is your book deal, self-publishing like Create Space and hybrid publishing like Balboa Press and Ingram Spark. So now that you've heard all of that, um, give me some hearts if that makes things a little bit clearer for you. And if you're even more confused, then give me a little sad face and then I'll explain it a little bit more and answer some of your questions. And if you do have more questions um, on this, then just pop them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. So let's talk about now how to decide which one is best for you. So with regards to creative control, because when you're writing your first book, it's really, really common to want control over the whole process. If the publisher is paying you, then they have the final say. If you are paying them, 
you have the final say. So whoever is paying the money to get it published is ultimately the one who will have the final control and the final say over production. Although many traditional publishers are very, very collaborative, but that being said, um, at the end of the day, they're wanting to, to make back their investment and, and sell books, right? So a couple of questions then that might help you decide are you willing to, to wait? Are you not in a rush? And do you also want the, the pres, prestige of a traditional publisher? You're going to be looking at um, traditional publishing in that uh, case, which is 12 to 24 months. But if you want full control as well as all access to the statistics of how many books you've sold and you want regular updates on that, then self-publishing like Create Space is a great option for you. And finally, if you need support and you are prepared to pay for it, then hybrid publishing is absolutely perfect to go through that process. So I do hope that makes things uh, clear or clearer. There are a lot of different nuances and pros and cons when it comes to um, different publishing options. This is just a really, really quick overview. And Mary and I will be going into this in a lot more detail in the Aspiring Author Workshop and we really invite you to join us for that and the details will be in the comments below. And as I said throughout the video, if you do have any more questions with regards to different types of publishing or if you um, have any questions at all about promotion um, or platform building, let me know in the comments and I will get to that in a new video and I will see you guys next time. Bye for now.